All right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and in today's episode, I want to show you a little bit about stock market stuff, a little bit about Bitcoin news. Then we're going to show you some nice charts to look at and take a look at the expectations for my positioning over the coming couple of weeks. So slap a like on it in the meantime, and let's get straight into it. Look, Bob Lucas says this is going to be a big week in crypto, I think. And I agree. I have to agree. I think whether or not we've got another low to make and call that the final low of the bear market and then come swinging out of there, or whether we're just going to break above 17.6 and be off to the races. I think either way, crypto is going to move. I think the altcoin market is starting to sniff this out. I've noticed a lot of pumps, a lot of green, or at least more green than we've seen in a long time. Capo, he doesn't buy it. He's still not buying. And I suspect this is going to continue. I suspect he's not going to buy until we have recovered a significant amount of the bear market. One thing I do know is the Fed speak is tomorrow. So I'll be looking for any kind of hints of pausing the rate hikes, any kind of hints at slowing the velocity with which they are currently hiking rates. And then on Thursday, we got the CPI data. So I'll be looking to see if that's lower. If that's lower, then I think we have a good chance at putting in some higher lows in the stock market before moving off. Of course, the inverse is true. If we get more hawkishness, more talk of continuing to raise rates and a higher CPI print than the prior month, then I would expect to see the stock market puke and the volatility index spike. This is very interesting. This is an interesting look for the S&P 500 and it looks very familiar. Powell tomorrow and the CPI on Thursday. Look what has happened every other time. So will this time be different? Will this time yield a breakout of this massive downward slope in trend line? Or are we going to get a big rejection like we've seen in the prior two instances and are we going to be looking to put in one final low well that is indeed what the cycle count is telling us so if you ignore these three green arrows here and we just look at the blue ones the cycle count tells us we've had this failed cycle we should expect this to re get rejected somewhere in this neighborhood here over the coming couple of days before forming a cycle low how low down this forms is anybody's guess it could be well below the prior low it could be equal to that low but this is what the cycle count is currently hinting at it's currently hinting at getting a rejection here dropping into the cycle low and go however of course you have to respect what the market price tells you if we get a lower cpi print and perhaps language from the fed tomorrow that talks about pausing the rate hikes and the market were to break out and do something like this then that of course has to be respected that of course has to be a long from me at least and we will be looking to form this cycle low more in the green count over here and likely say goodbye to this blue count and get rid of all three of these blue arrows. So as ever, one day at a time, but it will be interesting to see if this cycle count here lines up with what we have seen on the prior two occasions. Over in the world of Bitcoin, Intel's new Bitcoin mining chips are now installed and live in Hive blockchain's operations. So this means the first miners built with Intel's new Bitcoin mining chips have just gone online in Canada. This is a massive, massive step. This continues to take the ASIC mining rigs out of a few hands, continues to decentralize them more. There was a small period of time in which most of the miners, most of the ASIC rigs used to mine Bitcoin came out of a small handful of companies in China. This is slowly starting to decentralize, which is of course far better because it prevents China from creating the chips and keeping them only for themselves to mine Bitcoin, which of course gives them a competitive advantage over the rest of the world. So I like to see this. I'd like to see more and more of these companies continue to produce their own versions of ASICs, their own mining chips. And I'm sure this is a trend that will continue making Bitcoin more robust and more decentralized over time. The MP of Belgium is going to be taking his salary in Bitcoin and he cited that he wants to defend financial freedom. So this is yet another MP taking their salary in Bitcoin. It really speaks volumes, doesn't it? When the leaders of these countries don't want to take their salary in their own currency, it really speaks volumes to just how close to the end of these fiat currency cycles we really are. And also to how superior Bitcoin is as a form of money. In other news, ARK Invest's Kathy Wood has said her capitulation metrics have shown that Bitcoin has bottomed and is ready to turn. So this made me think, what's happening to the price of ARK? Is it time to add a little bit of ARK exposure? I would honestly like to see a break above this box here for me to entertain a long. Let me draw this box here. But I think I'm going to add this to the watch list. So there it is down in the bottom in momentum stocks. Of course, this is an ETF, not really a momentum stock, but I'm just going to keep it down the bottom there. I'm not super interested in this, but potentially... I could see myself adding along something like this, perhaps, if we're going to go full ball melt up look. So whether I need to be a bit more patient, whether we end up getting like a leg down, something like this, I don't know, and then forming a base from here. And then that's probably too low, but say, say around this neighborhood, whether that's the case and we have to redraw a box down here and then the long comes from down here. I don't know yet, but 
I'm keeping half an eye on ARC for the moment because this is, of course, down absolutely massively. It currently sits around 80% down from its all-time high, and I think the low was over 80%. Anyway, for now, I've put it here, and uh, I will let you know if I decide to add any of this to a longer-term account or even to a shorter-term account. Bitcoin looks a lot more constructive, to be honest. Bitcoin is gearing up for its next cycle. You can see here before we've had the MACD cross, and that led to the start of a new bull market. MACD cross, start of a new bull market, once again here. And now the MACD is crossed and ready to flip green on the histogram. So is it time? I think it is, or at least very, very close to time. There are imminent crash analysts everywhere, but have you noticed how they're becoming more quiet? The bears are slowly becoming more quiet and rightfully slow. The MDAX is powering higher and the S&P will follow in its tracks. It likely is going to be ending this bear market in the near future. Stay tuned for fact-based analysis and macro. So you can see here, wave three takeoff has started. Wave three takeoff has started. The S&P, like I said, whether it needs to come down and put in one more cycle low and go, or whether it's gonna form that cycle low higher up remains to be seen. But one thing we know is once that cycle low is in, very, 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 very good chance that that is the end of the bear market. We can of course expect this sometime between February and March in the worst case scenario. And I think this is why we're seeing these crash analysts start to become more and more quiet. Remember, bears are getting squeezed over in Hong Kong. There's no imminent crash to be found here. This looks much more like the start of the blow-off top move, as you can see right here. The FTSE 100 is at fresh highs. Again, not the sort of thing you see from a bear market rally. Small traders continue to bet big on the collapse of markets. This means Max Payne is set towards the upside. As I have been saying over and over and over again on this channel, it does not preclude the event that we could have a drop into a cycle low but i'm telling you we are getting very very close to up only i keep being told this is a bear market but what do you think okay pre-covid highs we obviously had the c19 plunge we gapped and went above it then we came down for a perfect retest and now we sit just eight percent from a new all-time high on a weekly closing basis for the dow jones okay again does not mean we couldn't roll over quickly but as it is right now does not speak to bear market rally speaks more to a recovery play and of course the dollar the dollar had its little fake out pump seems to be getting rejected off of this death cross which is now occurring the last time this happened it was lights out for the dollar is this time going to be different i seriously doubt it hopping into a dollar chart you can see that this big green level if i scroll out you can see where this level comes from it actually goes even further back than that if i load my chart as you can see it goes all the way back here so so we are currently closing below this level as you can see maybe coming in for a retest i would think it makes perfect sense to head down to this blue trend line this blue support line i think we'll probably get some level of bounce off of this and then eventually we can roll over and break down and begin the true leg down deep into the 95 range us 10-year yield continues to come off so again it does not speak to risk off just yet the us two-year yield there was a big level right here as you can see and we've currently closed below that looking for a retest before perhaps a resumption or is this a breakout retest resumption of the diagonal quick update on geo still hanging on to this i won't tolerate any loss below these lows here so if we if these lows are violated that will be that trade closed for something like a 16 percent profit so that's absolutely fine with me gold continues to push higher so nothing i can do apart from respect this trend line it's probably a cycle low coming in the not too distant future so we'll wait for that and see what happens there silver looks to be breakdown retest and looking for a resumption i was a little bit worried that i might have got shaken out here but this does look to be resolving downwards respecting this trend line break so the other nice thing is we've got these highs right here these wicks and one here so potentially we could see some sort of a re-entry form is this going to do what i thought it might which is something like this come down to a nice deep low and then break out in which case the long from me and the re-entry on silver will come from a trend line break right here so one day at a time as ever for now just going to wait and see how this resolves this could absolutely still chop around inside of this box and then break out and if it breaks out above the top of this box then that is where my long will come from Gold miners continuing to break out of their box, so nothing to do apart from see if I can push that and get some more from the market. So I added a marathon position yesterday, so I am officially long in a longer term account for Marathon Digital, looking to play this for at least a couple of daily cycles in Bitcoin. I also went long Riot as of yesterday. We gapped up. We are into resistance and getting rejected. If I have to pay a stop on this, I have to pay a stop on this and re-enter. I would not be surprised to see this roll over a little bit more before resuming higher. If you're not in now and you wanted a safer entry, a breakout of this purple line at the top 
would be a better entry and you could have a wider stop so therefore you would need a smaller position size but i am officially long riot blockchain i am officially long marathon digital as you can see the FTSE 100 i continue to push this trade so not much i can do apart from try to hang on and see if we can make our way up into this 8500 range vix hedge still doing a whole lot of nothing but i want to keep this insurance policy open as we move into the cpi print Dow Jones looks like potentially a retest of this breakout area, so that's fine. We'll learn something either way. I would kind of expect not much apart from chop going into Thursday, and then the CPI will probably be the thing that moves this market. So for now, I remain long and strong, continue to push. If I'm stopped out of this trade, I will flip short, looking to target these lows down here at least. The NASDAQ, not much to say about that. It becomes interesting for me when and if we can break out of this downward slope in red trend line. And the S&P, I kind of already showed you, the cycle count in blue suggests that we've probably got to dive down here so i'm i'm open to that it would be a nice short opportunity if we can come up and touch this blue downward sloping trend line and then roll over that would be a nice short into this daily cycle low if not i'm more than happy to just sort of sit here and see what happens you know the score if we break out of this big blue downward sloping trend line then i will be long However, if we don't manage to break out or if we fake out something like this and roll over, then down here is where I'll be looking to buy on the cycle low. So a few more days of patience and we should know which one of those is going to be the strategy. Bitcoin looks like it wants to start a new uptrend, doesn't it? It looks like it probably wants to break above 17.6. So maybe we're not going to get this cycle low. Maybe we're going to have to call either this the early cycle low or perhaps a timing based cycle. That remains to be seen. But like I said over and over and over again, break above 17.6 on a closing basis and I will be long and strong from here. So I'll continue to play patient. I'm currently not long, as, I, as you know, if you've been watching the channel, I have not called this out. Ethereum looks to me like we're about to get a break above this box right here. So this is a box strategy all day long. I think break above there and that will be a long from me for a trade position only. I do not like this coin. I do not respect this blockchain whatsoever. But if it's going to break above there, then I'm happy to go along, assuming Bitcoin can follow through with some strength as well. Matic position for you, just an update in case anyone cares. Here we go, it's not really doing much, still sideways, still kind of just underneath break even, so that's fine. And Zcash right around break even, again, it looks to be retesting this horizontal level here. So more of a longer term play for Zcash and Matic for me. XRP, I'm looking to get long XRP for a trade. My entry would likely come from a break above this red horizontal line at around 40 cents. So that will be the XRP trade. I'm not really interested in this a great deal at the moment, but break above 40 cents and you will see me go long. So this is just me calling this out ahead of time just to let you know if we break above 40 cents for XRP, that will be a long trade from me as well. If you found value here today, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're not already, turn those notifications on if you want to continue to get updated as I change my positions, as I add new ones, as I get stopped out, as I take profit. If you want to see all of that good stuff, make sure the notifications are turned on so you don't miss anything. You can go ahead and follow me on Twitter, sometimes I update on my positions there. In the meantime, like it if you like it, dislike it if you didn't, and until next time, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.